Welcome back, everybody. It's Monday morning, July the 17th, and it is time for unit number four. So this after this week, we will be exactly halfway through. So this is a good time to make sure that you are um, caught up on everything for units one through three. If there's anything that you had missed turning in, now is a good time to make uh, a plan and arrange that with me so that we can get you all caught up before the second half starts. It's just gonna make things a lot easier. This is also a really important week in terms of the practice that you're getting um, with writing because it's going to play into your argument essay. And so every assignment from here on out until we turn in the argument essay is kind of designed to help you with that. So it's very important that you do the things in order um, including the assignment from unit two, even though it's not directly related to the argument essay, it is tied to it in terms of uh, practice with documenting sources. So if you um, have questions or concerns, do reach out by email and let me know um, if there's something that you need to turn in that you haven't done so already you know, just give me a heads up and, and let's see if we can't make a plan and get you all caught up. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm going to share two items. We're going to take a look at the writing assignment, of course, eventually, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up, but first things first, let's take a look at the, um, unit four module. So this week, as I mentioned, we are focusing on evaluating and incorporating sor sources. We've started that in week two, um, but this week we're going to be focusing in and you're going to be choosing your topic for your argument essay. So this is a big week. Um, under the readings and resources folder, you have a couple of things to read. You have a reminder about accessing the post-university library. All of your sources for your argument paper should come directly from the post-university library. You should not be using Google. You should not be opening using um, open internet sources for your paper. So it is really important to, um, to review how to use the post library. In terms of evaluating sources, we've got a couple of other readings from your textbook, and then there's an activity on creating a references page. Um, we will continue to work on the references page and the in-text citation. Um, the lesson on in-text citation though is back in unit two. So if you had problems with that in unit two, make sure you go back and review that. I'll post some additional um, resources for you, but that's where the lesson on uh, the internal citation exists. So that's your readings and resources. And then you have two assignments as usual. The discussion board this week is a little bit fun to give you some perspective on writing pro and con as part of argument essays or assignments. We will write about the pro and con of using a particular product. When you write about the pro of a product, you focus on one reason that supports that product, that makes that product good. When you write about the con, of course, you're focusing on one reason that is um, not in favor of that product. So you really only need one pro and one con. You should select a fun product that is interesting to you. You can write one paragraph about the pro and one paragraph about the con. So you should have two paragraphs this time out and you can pick any product that you want. Some of the suggestions that um, are listed here, the water bottle, they're talking about using a reusable water bottle, not bottled water. Um, although you could choose bottled water as well <clears throat> as a product. Self-driving cars. Um, you may not be interested in self-driving cars, but maybe electric cars instead. Um, jelly beans. I always find that weird that they put that on there, but hey, I've had some good paragraphs about pros and cons of jelly beans, uh, video games, and eBooks. There are lots of other things that you can do. You can even pick a particular product. Um, I've had a lot of people write about a particular brand of um, craft item, for example, the Cricut machines, the, the, the vinyl cutting machines. I've had people write about that type of stuff. 
um, a particular video game instead of just video games in general, or um, say the Sony PlayStation, uh, people have written about that, or the game, um, what's the Nintendo one? I even, I'm looking at it right now. The Switch. Oh, my brain just lost that word, but I'm literally staring at our Switch. Uh, so it could be a, it could be a brand, it could be a particular um, product. It doesn't have to be a, a general product like a water bottle or jelly beans. It could be something very specific. And in fact, sometimes that makes it a little easier. So then when you are responding to others, of course, you can review their product um, and review the product that they have listed. And so um, to see if maybe uh, their pro and con make you want to try it or maybe make you not want to try it. Um, as usual, of course, you should post your own response by Wednesday if you want all the points for that. Um, and you have until Sunday to respond to others. Now, we have the big beginning of the argument paper. You will have three potential choices for your argument essay, and you're going to be starting with those this week. In this week, you're going to be focusing on writing two paragraphs that either have you can, you can approach it two ways. You can write two reasons that you believe what you believe, or you can write one paragraph on each side. I honestly think for this one, it's good to write one on each side, but you can approach it however you want to. Um, in one paragraph, you need to have a direct quote. And in the other paragraph, you need to have a documented use of the same source or a different source. You can have two if you want to, um, where you have paraphrased it or put it in your own words. You still cite that source just like you would if you were using a direct quote. So when we use the in-text citations back in unit two, you're going to have an in-text citation in each of your paragraphs here. So the three topics that you could choose from, and I'm I must admit, I'm not a fan of the new topics. Um, they change the topics every few terms. Uh, I'm not a fan of these because they're highly political. Um, and that's a little bit tricky. Uh, you can make arguments on either side of an issue, no matter what your politics are, though. So I really, that's why I'm encouraging you to do the pro and the con or the both sides on this assignment, because it will help you think more logically about the topic and not get caught up in um, any of the current talking heads that are talking about these things. But anyway, so the three to choose from, should artificial intel intelligence be used in classrooms so you can focus on a, a, something like chat GPT? Uh, should books be banned in, for, from school libraries? I would, if I were going to pick that one, I would focus on a particular age group. So I would not do school libraries in general. I would say either choose elementary, secondary, or um, higher ed uh, and focus on that. And then the final one, should college graduates receive debt forgiveness? Um, with that one, again, that can be highly political, but you could also do a little research on the debt forgiveness programs that already exist. Um, for example, teaching in certain school districts will um, qualify you for some debt forgiveness. Uh, there's a lot of programs out there. So you could focus on that instead of just doing it in general. Really, the more specific that you can be with your and targeted that you can be, the easier it will be not to let this devolve into some kind of big political thing. So Anyway, that's what you're going to do this week. Um, for the assignment sheet, of course, you have the list again. Um, it goes into the library database and gives you a link to get into the database. Um, you do need to locate an article from the library database. And the good news is when you do that, you're going to be able to have a pre-correct um, citation. So I'm going to show you that real quick. We're going to go ahead and go into the library database. I've already logged in today 
so it didn't make me log in. You may have to log in. All right, so I'm going to use, I think it's going to make me log in now. Nope. Okay. I'm going to use uh, artificial intelligence. Except I apparently can't spell. This morning, artificial intelligence and education. All right. So um, the keyword search will give you a ton of stuff. There's over a million articles. Um, and then we have to kind of wade through. Now, I don't care if you choose an academic journal or a magazine. Um, either one of those is fine. But academic journals, of course, are going to be a little bit higher level. So I would say um, we might want to add something like plagiarism, which is what most people fear when it comes to things like chat GPT. Okay, so this might be a good one. Chat GPT conundrums, pl probing plagiarism and parroting problems in higher education practices. That sounds like it might be helpful. Leadership is needed for ethical chat GPT, character assessment and learning, also uh, learning using artificial intelligence. Um, let's see, here we go. This one might be good. New York City <clears throat> blocks chat GPT at schools. Should other districts follow? That sounds like it could be a really good um, article for us. So I'm gonna click on this one. And in order to read it, I would need to click over here on the left-hand side where it says HTML full text. In order to cite it, I'm going to click over here on the right-hand side, which is where the cite button is. And I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to copy this and paste it into my Word document. Now, I'm going to show you that Word document. I have not changed it. It is not about artificial intelligence, uh, but I'll show you how easy it is to put this in your um, reference page. So we're going to put the reference. I'm going to put it at the top. Well, right after the first one, let's do that. All right. So I'm going to show you a trick. When you go to paste something, if you want to match the formatting so that it keeps the uh, italics and it also does the um, indentation for you, because I've already got it set up that way, you would choose merge format or match formatting. Merge formatting, I think is what it's called in, on a PC. Now, I just so happened to put that in alphabetical order. I didn't mean to do that or didn't do that on purpose, uh, but I've done it. So you'll notice that the references are all in alphabetical order. That's always going to be true. All right. So that's all you have to do. That's why um, using the library for research is good for all kinds of reasons, uh, not the least of which is that you will get the free um, thing. All right. So what I have done in setting up the sample for you, I did not, like I said, use one of the pre done ones, but procrastination is what I used. Um, it's not real anyway, other than the article was about procrastination. So I have my first paragraph with a direct quote, and I have um, named the journal instead of the author, because the authors are going to go in the in-text citation, and I have a direct quote there. And then in the second one, I have named the authors, Zuber et al., and the date in the in-text citation, and then I have the paraphrased information. So your paragraphs will hopefully make more sense than my gobbledygook here, but um, you would have both a paraphrased and a quoted, one in each paragraph, um, and it can be from the exact same article. Those were both from the same article. Um, but if you wanted to use two articles because you found one that's pro and found one that's con, that's fine too. Um, just be sure you cite both of them then. All right. So of course, once you're done with that, you're going to submit that just like we normally do. So let's go back to the class. Um, I think it's right here. There we go. These, these little doodads get in the way sometimes. So when you're ready, of course, to submit it, you're going to click on the link 
and you're going to upload your file, browse local files, and that is this one. Going to agree and click submit. If you have questions about this assignment, this is a tough one, then I would, um, obviously you can reach out to me anytime by email, but also you may wanna take advantage of the weekly workshop. Um, this week, of course, as usual, it's gonna be Wednesday night at 7 p.m. and uh, you'll be able to ask questions in that session. The other thing, of course, is those sessions are being recorded, and so those will be shared out with you afterwards. Um, so if you can't make it live, you should still be able to take advantage of that presentation. Um, but of course, you can also always reach out to me. I would also highly encourage you guys to use the Tutor Me system and get started using that. Um, you can submit your work and have a professional tutor help you with it. Um, so that's a great resource as well. All right, folks, that's it for this week. Um, I do hope you have a great week and I will see you back here next Monday uh, if I don't see you in between times for help. All right, take care, everybody. Have a great day.